In the bodybuilding world, we all know that there is a lot of mischief between coaches and clients. Whether those coaches are prescribing horrible and life-threatening programs, or whether the clients aren't listening to the coaches and instead doing something else entirely, but blaming the coaches for what they're doing. And then, God forbid, we enter oh, sexual no. relationships with coaches and clients, which just gets absolutely wild. And all of the scandals going on within bodybuilding and generally every sport with this kind of coach-client relationship is wild. But as of recently, one of the coaches that's gotten a lot of scrutiny is Matt Jansen. He's been blamed for Nick Walker not showing up to this year's Olympia. He's also been blamed for Nick Walker not showing up to the New York Pro like he should be showing up. He's been notoriously blamed for people's death like Dallas McCarver in the past, and he's done some other sketchy things that people have spoken out about. But one of the most prevalent clients he's had in the long time, Quentin Beastwood, has come out with some pretty disturbing information. And today we're going to review this video and I'm going to talk about exactly the things that you should be concerned with. Let's listen to what he has to say about his relationship with Matt Jansen and what he's revealing to the industry. I'm going to put this on two times speed just to make it super quick for y'all. I don't want you to have to walk through this with me step by step because it is a lengthy video. Retirement, and I hope you, know, you can live out the rest of your life with your family and make some great memories. So happy for these guys. Congrats, Keon. Many months ago in May, I did my First show in almost two years. I take two years from the stage to you know come with more tissue to be the best that I can be. And it's funny, I'm sure there's videos out there of me saying this, or maybe I posted it somewhere, but I wasn't focused on beating Derek. I wasn't focused on I wasn't focused on catching up to guys like Nick. I wanted to catch Andrew and Samson. That's who I was aiming for. Because in my heart, to me they're always the best. And it was just a matter of when they put it all together, they would be the best. And um that's why I was chasing. And every time I trained hard, I had them in mind. Also, you know, there's similarities, you know, they're my countrymen. My dad's Nigerian, they're from Nigeria. So definitely I see the size that they had, or I saw the size they had, and I knew that that's where I had to be if I wanted to be very successful at the world level. I wanted to be one of the best in the world. Man, I put so much into that. I put so much into the offseason. I was fucking damn near dying in my sleep. You know, like I had to get a CPAP because I kept choking in my sleep. I wasn't breathing properly. I was pushing the weight so hard because coach I had wanted me to do that. And um I'm not a big fan of pushing food that hard when you're that uncomfortable. I do think that there's some pushback, but you know, I really believed in and trusted my coach. So I did everything he said. And honestly, we made great results during that offseason. My coach is Matt Jansen. Um, or was Matt Jansen. I, I fired his ass because he did a shit job. Let's just stay right in line with what he's saying here. Uh, he looks amazing, right? Even in his offseason, he's leaner than most dudes will ever be in their own offseason. It was incredible. But also on top of this, he has a really unique look. And he's right. He's part of the countrymen of Nigeria. And he has a certain look that they can achieve with pretty unique standards. I will also say that just like he said, bodybuilders are at the worst end of their health in the off season when they're pushing copious amounts of calories, destroying their sleep by causing literally sleep apnea through just eating the compression to your diaphragm through a full stomach constantly 24 seven. And then obviously the water retention and the pulmonary hypertension that comes with that. Holy shit, man, this is some scary stuff. When you really start pushing calories, it can get to be scary stuff. And especially if you have a coach who's very fond of pushing both matters in terms of calories and drugs, we enter some pretty sketchy territory. And I, I was criticized about firing him. People were like, well, why did you fire him? You should have given him another chance. Listen, motherfucker, I was worse than I was two years ago. You know, I took all that time, I made all these sacrifices, you know, and these sacrifices come in many shapes and forms. You know, I lost money because I'm paying for whatever it takes to be a great bodybuilder. I put in money, I invested money into this, I invested my time, my energy, I wasn't going out. I, I was a fucking bodybuilding robot. All I did was bodybuild. That's all I fucking did. I worked my fucking tail off all to show up to stage and be fucking smaller. Now, when it first happened, people thought, oh, it's something wrong with him because this guy gets right by the client. Now, let me tell you the difference between a great coach and somebody that's just a great marketer because I don't believe that you can be a great coach. Like, if you have a guy like me and you fuck up that badly, like, okay, guys, guys, like, this isn't like you just kind of missed. It's not like, okay, shit, we came in with added size, but we just were a little too soft in the boots or, you know, something was a bit bloated from, you know, maybe the carb was too aggressive. This was not that. That's the kind of error that is okay, you know, but I lost 10 pounds of muscle. I might put up pictures of the video so you can see how bad the fuck up was, but um, I lost weight that I should. I had no business losing and I was leaner years before, like two years ago. So true too about the saying of marketing, like some coaches are really good marketers. Others are just really good coaches and oftentimes they're not one or the other. Like sometimes you'll have a really good coach who's not marketing at all and you just have to stumble upon him through word of mouth and or or sometimes you have a coach who's putting out all of the content, all the information. And I'm one of those guys that has a nice balance, I think. But there's a lot of them who will just have a really great athlete, publish their really great athlete, talk about their really great athlete, have a, a great photographer around all the time, have a great videographer around all the time, and just try to embellish the lifestyle of being a coach and how great they are. And then it turns out they're garbage ass coaches. We'll speak on my own personal experience with Matt Jansen. I have a lot of insider information. Many of his clients have hired me. Many of his clients have hired the people in my friend group. I've seen basically <laughs> every program you could write truly. Uh, and it's disgusting. It's disgusting. And there's I, so much more. He look, I'll just lead with this. And then we'll talk about it later. His wife makes more programs than he does for clients. Okay, we'll just leave it there. I was leaner 10 pounds heavier than I was this year. And it's just the body 
the human body works in different ways for everybody. Now, for a guy like me, um, and I do, I need to take accountability for some of this because I was willing to do whatever. I'm one of those stupid fucking clients. Like, I just listen. If I trust you as my coach, I listen to everything you say. I'm like, okay, we're gonna do it. And I trusted his reputation and I trusted his expertise because I thought he knew what he was doing. When in fact, um, uh, listen, he, he, he must have never worked with somebody like me. Uh, I don't know, but I thought it was just a me thing, and I definitely took it a little bit personal because he gaslit me after it and he said that my gear was fake. Yes, guys, he told me my gear was fake. It wasn't the two hours of fucking cardio that I was doing because you were afraid I wasn't gonna show up in shape. It wasn't the two hours of cardio. It was my gear was fake. Now, there's your accountability after people are wondering why I fired him. I'm like, well, how do you continue to work with someone you can't agree on what the problem was? The problem was it was a miscalculation. You know. It was a complete miscalculation for weeks, months of the prep, you know, just pushing, pushing, pushing. Ignoring. This is so huge. Uh, a, a coach should be, it's a, it's a two-way street, right? Like with any sport, with any coach, with any athlete, it's a two-way street. I am not in a client's body. So I therefore would expect them to give me some certain amount of feedback with what they're going through, how they're experiencing a prep or an off season or whatever. And in hopes I could understand a little bit more clearly what they're going through. They can provide me some form of clarity, some form of clairvoyance to their situation and through that, I can provide more insight and guidance directly for them. But when you have these coaches who are just like, this is the end all be all, this is the higher road and you're taking it or you're not working with me. And then you combine that with a client who is very much of this mindset where it's like, I'll do whatever it takes coach, just kick me in, like put me on the bed, like I'm in. Dangerous fucking mix because that's where some really sketchy shit can happen. Bring feedback on my knees being hurt and you know, not being able to get a pump in the gym. Like I was, I was operating just off of passion for bodybuilding and my love for the sport. And I just had that, like, I had that fire in me. So even as bad as I felt, I'm the kind of person that, because I love doing this, that, that passion drives me. When I have no energy to do anything, that passion would wake me up at 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m. <clears throat> that passion would wake me up and I'd hit three rounds of posing, send it to my posing coach. You know, and my posing coach was, Joey Belt was, he was incredible, man. He was there for me. He was there for me every step of the way from the point that him and I started working together, we got really close. And um, yeah, like, anyways, I'm getting carried away. I'm making this video because Nick did not make it to the Olympia. They didn't make it to the Olympia guys. And people are going to criticize him as you know, I was criticized heavily too for my appearance at the show. Um, people are criticizing Nick and listen, like we're public figures. So, you know, criticism is fair. However, you're telling his coach didn't realize something was off. Oh, his body's not responding. You, you just realized his body wasn't responding, bro. Like his body wasn't responding at 14 weeks out, 12 weeks out, 10 weeks out. At what point do you realize, oh shit, this isn't work. You know, so that's the thing. It was the same problem with me to where when you're a client, when you're a solid client, like I am, and like I know Nick is, you're just locked in doing your work. You're just doing your fucking job. If your coach is telling you, you look great, this is the gear, you're going to do it. You're, you're going to be great. Whatever your coach is telling you this shit, you believe it. So sometimes you, as a bodybuilder, like I'm like a 300 pounder and like I always think that I'm small. I always think that I could be bigger. Now, some people are going to hear me say that and understand it because they feel that way about themselves. Some people are just going to think I'm crazy, but it's just normal bodybuilding. And that's why a lot of people don't coach themselves because it's hard to be completely objective as a bodybuilder. But that being said, when you have a coach and when you really trust in a coach, your coach is your set of eyes. So something's wrong, your coach is supposed to point it out. His coach that's so true, right? Like you can get in your head way big time. And uh, Lee Priest is notorious for saying, like, you don't need a coach. Like, I think it's stupid to have a coach. I think it's waste money. But the reality is, is like in every profession, you have some form of a mentor or coach because you have these delusions that come to you, especially in times of high stress, in times of high emotionality. And a coach is supposed to be someone who can sort of solidify the ground you're walking on and provide you some confidence. It's less about the technical aspects of coaching. Even for me, like as a coach, it's less about telling a client what to do specifically. And it's actually more just about listening to what they're going through and then trying to provide reinforcement through their situations dynamically and it is so much more important to go through a prep or an off season with hearing someone and what they're going through and hearing how their emotions are handling themselves as they carry them through you know these seasons and then working with them in that capacity whatever it might be that sort of emotional volatility then just saying here's your program here's what's optimal on paper execute because it's just going to fail nine times out of ten because what's optimal for this guy might be suboptimal for this guy because of the way he's living his life so it's yeah these are just hallmarks of good coaching versus bad coaching i guess coach didn't point it out you know so from people that I know that saw what he looked like, they said that he was better off pulling out. They said that's how bad he looked, that he made the best decision by pulling out. And to me, if you have a high-level athlete and you can't even bring them into the show because of whatever the fuck you put them through or because you failed to notice something, especially when you, the guy moved to your fucking state, to your city, like, guys right there, you know what I'm saying? Um, it lets me realize the problem that I had wasn't personal. Like, this guy's just not locked in. You know, he's not locked in. Um, Listen, a lot of that fucking target shit was marketing, man. Like he was marketing. Um, he's, he's a formula guy. He has formulas that have worked in the off season. Yeah, parts of our off season were great. I'd rate the off season working with him as a 88%, which is like an A plus in Canada. Great, great off season. Well, no, 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 maybe 80% because when I was at 320, he pushed me. He said I was too lean. So he basically pushed me and wanted me to have burgers on every training day to put on more body fat. And then when we did the prep, one of the excuses at the end was that, you know, oh, we pushed the off season too hard and it was hard to get in shape. It's like, well, you fucking said that. You told me I was too lean. And like, I have screenshots. I have the actual WhatsApp conversation. I'm just not the kind of guy that's going to like, air out text and shit unless somebody starts running their mouth and they want to go there. Then, of course, I have proof of him ignoring feedback. And and um, yeah, all that shit, ignoring feedback, telling you he thinks the gear is fake. Like, bro, maybe it was the two hours of fucking cardio. You know, how could you go to something that can be proven that you haven't proven, but you say that that's the reason. Now, 
there's a lot of other high level athletes he's worked with that he's done this to in the past. A lot of amateur athletes, again, there's a formula. Sometimes it works with athletes, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes athletes don't make it to shows. This isn't the first time that's happened. But for some reason, people keep that shit on the hush hush. People keep that shit on the hush hush. And they only speak about and promote when he does well. But the reality is, I was duped. Like, I bought into the fucking hype. To me, the hype was fake. Uh, I think he, he is a smart guy. I think the coaches will have this formula and they just apply it. Control, paste. Control, copy, paste. Like, control, copy, paste. Every single client. And maybe with three out of 10 clients that works well. And then you say like, hey man, hey look, if you sauce up my career, bro, we'll coach you for free, no worries, dog. Gears on me, we'll take care of you, right? We'll get you sponsors, it'll be all good. And then the other seven guys that he completely fucking failed, I don't know what's going on, bro, like your body's just not reacting well, maybe you're not built for body, but like just all these horrible responses, right? It, there is a formula that these people have that maybe is intellectually designed, but at the end of the day, they just copy and paste and whoever it works with, thumbs up, great. Whoever it doesn't, it's like, you know, boner killer at the end of the day. And it fucking is with every coach, I swear. Word of God, they all just have this mythic formula that's somehow A plus, like S tier shit, yet it only works with like a very slight few people. And then, which my grandmother could fucking coach to the Olympia, by the way. And they get just all the accolades in the world for being technicians. This is the anti <laughs> anti technician. They can only work in one monolithic, like just viewpoint of a client, and then everything else is just shit. And, and they still get praised for it. It's crazy. The problem is his ability to adapt, adaptability as a coach. Like, terrible, garbage. Like, when you see my body finding out you're a high level coach, maybe you don't, maybe you don't know how to deal with it perfectly, but like troubleshoot, you know, like. I will say this though, just to, to interrupt here, like the, the cardio thing, look, some dudes are going to have to do three hours of cardio. Straight up, Hottie Chupon was doing three hours of fucking cardio before last year's Olympia. Some people will need that. So I wouldn't necessarily point fingers to say, oh, you made me do two, co two hours of cardio. I won my natural pro card. Naturally, I did two sessions of 75 minutes of cardio per day. And I'm not like bragging saying like, I'm the fucking tough guy. I'm just saying sometimes to get as lean as you need to get, you have to do some pretty drastic shit. Now, could he have pulled other levers before adding that much cardio? Probably, maybe. I don't know, right? It depends. It's I, I wasn't in this guy's prep. I don't know the whole situation. But realistically, two hours of cardio isn't horrible. I just want to be very clear on that. Like some guys are going to need that. For Christ's sake, Samson Dowda was eating three eggs for his breakfast. It's going to be needed at some point to push to those kind of extremes. Troubleshoot. Instead, he kept pushing and then just tried to gaslight me. And for me, that's what I don't respect. And I bet you, listen, I haven't asked Nick what the actual problem was. I just know what everybody else knows. I know the rumors are fake here. I'm telling you, he has told this shit to... I can confirm, I'm not gonna throw names under the bus because you know, I'm not trying to bring people in like that, but I can confirm at least 11 other people that he's told had fake gear because things didn't turn out the way that they should have. But um, Sean Clarita, he made an excuse after prejudging. Matt made an excuse about Sean saying the judges asked for that. No, no, the judges didn't ask for the guy to be fucking flat. You know, they didn't ask for him to show up flat. They wanted him to be a bit tighter and come in with a more controlled abdomen. I think that versus the look that they brought are not the same thing. Like you brought this guy in like me. Now he has a lot more muscle maturity and density than I have. So, you know, he still looks decent, but it's like, man, like once you put on that tissue, like he was the giant killer and he didn't show up as the giant killer. And there's a common denominator. One guy didn't make it to the show. One guy looked <laughs> like a fucking swimmer, I guess. And then Sean also shows up on his side. So I guess I say all that stuff to say that if you follow my Instagram and you know about the Thigh Gap community, I would like to welcome Nick and Sean into the Thigh Gap community. And uh, I'd like to let you guys know that you guys are welcome here. This is a very inclusive group of people. Um, we get together for a quiet time on Thursdays. So yeah, welcome to the Thigh Gap community. And I just hope everybody, I'm happy because I've been getting a lot of messages and comments and I figured, you know, whatever, I'm gonna talk about this, I don't give a fuck. Whatever backlash happens, if there is any backlash, it doesn't matter. Um, this is the truth, this is the truth. I don't know, like you, you, you couldn't catch, like if something's that bad, like, your guy's a pull you couldn't catch that. You couldn't, like if it's fake gear, you're talking you didn't realize it took you fucking over 10 weeks to realize he might be using fake gear no that's a coaching issue to me that is a fucking coaching issue and same thing with me like you know to just put it on gear when there's things that we did and feedback you ignored ah that is absolutely bonkers to me but anyways guys um i say all that to say we have to change the culture about bodybuilding with coaches and stuff and i think with samson winning with his wife this is going to do that a lot of these coaches are not what you think they are um a lot of times listen every coach misses that is a part of the game perfection does not exist every coach misses do not buy these fucking narratives that this guy has a recipe for this guy this guy did this with him so he'll do that with you i'm not working with a coach still uh, for me it's after the experience after i got fucking burned and fucking gaslit yeah it hurt me emotionally guys it hurt you know so it's hard to put that trust because i believe in that so much the same way that i believe the sun's gonna come up in the morning i believe he was a great coach and you know believing him not second guessing anything is great if your coach is you know if your coach kind of understands your body i guess but for me it backfired and it looks like it's backfired for Nick. now the reason why the problem that I backfired to Nick and Sean is because he's worked with them for so long so he knows their body so to me it just lets me know that he's just not locked in he's got way too much shit going on and you know is what it is now anyways uh about other coaches guys don't buy into the hype of coaches and stuff like there are, there are great coaches out there i think Henry Rambo is still a great coach i think um Boss of Allah is killing it, bro. That guy's killing it. And I would say he's coach of the year. But Samson's wife just got herself an Olympia, bro. So I, even if she's only got one client, that's coach of the year to me. That's a big fucking win. You know what I'm saying? Especially with the adversity and drama with that past situation. Like, that's fucking amazing. Also, just as a little bit of pre-context or preface here for people who aren't necessarily aware of the bodybuilding sphere and like the drugs that people use. Typically in a bodybuilding competition, you're going to be using things like testosterone and its derivatives. Now, bodybuilders exogenously inject testosterone into their bodies through an intramuscular injection. This is something we've seen 
seen on many different forms of media and pushed out there as like dare content. You've probably seen it. Putting a pin in your ass and injecting some form of oil. It's a very real thing. But what they'll do is they'll move around these compounds to get different side effects that are selective. So for instance, they might use a dihydrotestosterone derivative, which is still an anabolic steroid. It's just a derivative of one of testosterone's metabolites dihydrotestosterone, such as Primabon. These would be one of those compounds, or Mastron. The bodybuilder would then inject this compound at a probably higher ratio to testosterone to offset estrogenic side effects or just lower estrogen in large to partition lower body fat differently, things of that nature. Basically, altering hormones to achieve a super physiological appearance on stage, which is the goal. But one of the things that they also do, which is really important to understand here, is adjust the ester of a compound. So testosterone, you don't just inject it into your body as testosterone. It's a, thin set, a synthetic version of testosterone that has an ester bound to it. And this ester changes the molecular weight. It also changes how quickly that molecule is, once it enters the Debo, going to be metabolized. And so you can inject a form of testosterone that will have a half-life of 7 to 10 days, which is a longer form of testosterone. It's going to have a longer duration, meaning it's going to stay in your bloodstream much longer. Therefore, changes in the doses or frequency of doses might take a much longer time to represent themselves. In a prep, what bodybuilders will do is switch to a shorter ester, meaning a much shorter half-life, something like a propionate or an, uh, sorry, an acetate ester. These are much lower total molecular weight and also get metabolized much quicker. Their half-lives are much shorter, sometimes up to three to six days. And so when you make a change in dosage, frequency, or compounds, that change becomes much, much more representative within the physique much quicker, as is super important when you have a deadline such as a bodybuilding prep. And so what he's saying here, and it is brilliant, Quint is smart, he knows what he's doing, is that if Nick was getting fake gear, he would have known very soon because he was likely using shorter esters, which is very common in most of Matt's protocols. And through that, if he was, let's say, injecting for one week and getting less than desirable effects, he would know very quickly that that gear is fake, especially for someone who's been doing this for almost over a decade and been injecting gear for almost over a decade. That kind of variable is pretty representable as soon as it starts happening. And because it's a shorter ester, he would be able to see the changes rapidly. And if those changes weren't happening or the reverse of those changes were happening, let's say he's getting softer as in not more muscular and not leaner, he would very quickly pick up on it. And so it's complete horseshit to think that a bodybuilder would be using fake gear and not know about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's just not going to happen. And, you know, Matt Jansen basically claiming that he was using fake gear and that's what happened is rubbish. And I reported on this kind of insider information several weeks ago that there was the, the claim that he had fake gear. Uh, and it's just not true. It's ultimately not true. Something else happened. But they've kind of restructured how they do the judging and they don't put too much like MC priority over just condition, 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 because, you know, it would really be unfortunate that, you know, to, to not reward such a fantastic physique, because Samson's got a one of a kind physique. I mean, I guess there's guys like Andrew coming up and I'm not coming up Andrew there, but, you know, there's guys, I guess, that you're kind of compare. It's definitely going to be interesting. Um, guys, I came from the Olympia last week. I had an incredible time at the Olympia. It was amazing. Um, I was, I had a great time meeting all you guys. Man, I love bodybuilding. And honestly, I was this year, that shitty showing, it really hurt, you know, it hurt because I put so much into this. So, you know, having. Everything comes to light now. If people can see the truth, like what really happened, man, it really boosted my morale. But also going to Vancouver and doing my guest posing, that really boosted my, my mood and my morale, my motivation. So, you know, for the past little while, I was kind of going on autopilot, even though, you know, I wasn't the happiest, you know, still hurt. And I, I knew that I had more to give and I just I didn't give it, right? But, um, you know, I, I, I take accountability because at the end of the day, I didn't stop any of the decisions that were being made. I didn't put up any flight. But yeah, I'm letting you guys know what's up. Uh, I'm talking that real shit. If you don't like it, go cry. Okay, guys, so there's just a couple points I want to make because my memory card died. So, two years ago, uh, when they did, when, when Matt and Nick did the Arnold's, which was after the Olympia, that was a mess. Like they didn't nail that one, right? So this was happening for a while now. But anyways, if you saw that Samson beat your guy, who was the third, who was the third best bodybuilder at the time, and Samson is a guy with similarities to myself, and Samson wasn't inside out shredded, but he didn't need to be to beat your guy, who was still good, just downsized. It, for you to not realize, like, yo, somebody with these attributes is better like this. Instead, you suck the guy down and have him extremely flat. And honestly, I was even more peeled two years ago. But the fact that he couldn't pick up on that, the fact that that was being rewarded by judges and I worked with him, he saw my body like pretty much die as the prep went on. He never, it never came to the dude's mind like, oh fuck, this isn't going to go well. Like, come on, you talking about you top two coaches in the game, motherfucker, you went close. Anyways, hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to, if you have any hate, send all that hate to Quint. Quint's a great dude. Like, I think Quint is one of the realest fucking bodybuilders there is on, on stage. He's actually, in my opinion, less of a bodybuilder and just more of a normal person, which is like the kind of people I gravitate towards is people I gather 
inspiration from. So I admire him. And I also admire that he spoke out about this because so many athletes have gone through Matt Jansen. And I am formulating a video. And when I say this, it takes me a long time to make these videos because I don't just write content down when I do a video like myself only, I am going through and finding resources through people's information, past programs, things like that. I have a lot of videos coming out in the future, but it's going to take some time to make them. Matt Jansen is one where I've specifically seen many programs that he's written or sometimes his wife has written. That's a real thing. I have, I have a lot of information, allegedly. Okay, we're just going to say that, but it will come out in time when the time is right and I've accumulated enough information to make sure that it is high quality, feasible and realistic information for you guys. So I'm not giving you incorrect information. Okay, but in my opinion, Matt Jansen, terrible coach. Yes, he's gotten many Olympians, but this is a selection bias just because he's gotten Olympians so that other Olympians hire him. And like I said, these people are so genetically gifted at a certain point, my grandmother could coach them and get them to successfully place at many different shows. It is much different to have a really great coach versus just having a couple Olympians on your roster that give you a selection bias. But let me know what you think down below. Is Matt Jansen a shit coach? Have you had experiences working with Matt Jansen? And what do you think about this whole situation? Is there garbage ass coaches out there that really do take people's money? If you like this video, I do suggest subscribing. It does absolutely help me out and it doesn't even seem like a big deal to you. But holy shit, I tell you what, it is a massive deal to me. The more buttons that get clicked, the better that this channel gets boosted into the algorithm and the more I love you. Okay, thanks. If you clicked it. If you didn't, I guess thank you anyways, because you actually watched this long, which is actually pretty crazy as well. Uh, I wish I had a surprise virtually. If I could give you a hug or something like that, I would. Or you could just write a nice comment down below and I'll probably reply to it with something sweet. Maybe even give it a heart. That sounds good, no doubt. So maybe I'll give that a shot. Or hopefully you've subscribed right now. Or hopefully you've watched it till now. Either way, thank you for being here. It's been great. Awesome.